and welcome, my dudes, dudettes, neithers, boats, and eilers. Welcome to Amateur Author. If this is your first time here, especially warm welcome to you. And this is the point in the video, the first 30 seconds or so, where I remind everyone that this is at its core an advice channel, and what works for me is not necessarily going to work for you. This is also where I remind everybody that I am not a professional. I am not a professional writer, I am not a professional author, the only thing I am is a professional asshole. So now that we've got that out of the way, let's jump into this. As you may have been able to tell from the title of this video, today we are going to be talking about perspective, specifically first person. So for those of you that might already know, and most definitely for those of you that don't, first person perspective is when a story is told through a singular person's point of view. However, unlike third person limited, we are reading everything through I, me narration. So the person that is narrating the story is also the same person that the story is happening to. Anthony Burgess's A Clockwork Orange is a very good example of this. I believe that Fifty Shades of Grey, which I have never read and will never read and will be doing a video on how much I hate that book, uh, is a good example. Twilight, for those of you that like Twilight, is written in first person as well. I read a lot of third person, so yeah. Autobiographies are also always going to be in first person because it is being written about the person it is being written by. I want to jump in to this and really kind of start by letting you know this is broken into two sections. We're going to be talking about why first person is helpful, but also why first person comes with a lot of problems and why it's something you should be aware of. So there are a lot of ways in which first person is helpful. Point one for first person being helpful is that we never have to guess about the character. We are always going to know what they're thinking, where they are, and what they're doing. And because of that, and because we are reading everything through I, me perspective, we have a special connection to this character we will not have to other characters in the story. We feel this person's pain and we read it as they are telling it to us and as it is happening to them through their narration. It allows for the reader to be very connected to characters in a very emotional and intimate fashion, which isn't necessarily something that third person allows for as much, though it can if you are using third person limited. And that isn't to say that you can't be intimately attached to characters that are represented through second person, third person, or are secondary characters in a first person narration. I just personally find it's a little easier in first person because we are seeing everything through their level of pain and tolerance and we see directly how it affects them. Point two about why first person is a very helpful perspective to work in. It's easier to relate to connect with and understand our character and their motivations. Motivation is one of the most important aspects of novel writing. You want your characters to be motivated. You want to understand why they are doing what they are doing. So really this point two is connecting, or not connecting, but understanding your characters. And if everything is being told through first person, it is easier to understand why there's less guesswork. For example, a Clockwork Orange, which I'm going to use a lot um, as my example because it is a favorite first person novel of mine. Alex is literally doing it just for fun and there is no guesswork as to any of that. It is told to us. He tells us himself, this is for giggles and funsies, for the power of it. In third person, we might wonder, well, what if he had a bad childhood? What if this is how he was raised? That first person, that interaction we get with him and his family, all of that tells us he's raised just fine. He loves music. He's just a freaking psycho. And he does all of this literally for the walls. Another reason that first person can be super, super helpful is writing with a more... Uh, writing with a perspective that has narrowed down to a singular character allows for better character development for your main character because they are your primary focus and it helps readers figure out who they should or should not be rooting for. 
part of why it's easy to become attached to first person characters is because we know why we want to or we don't want to root for them. We are compelled by these characters. We know who we're rooting for and why we're rooting for that person. At the same time, narrowing it down to a singular person also means that we learn more about them. That character is better developed because everything we know about them, they're telling us. And that can be really important. Uh, this is also a reason why it can be sometimes a little bit easier to write first person because we have such a narrow scope that we are looking through, which pulls us into point four. First person can be super helpful for new writers because our main focus is strictly to a singular character. We are not going back and forth between eight, nine, ten, eleven characters. This is not third person omniscient where we know everybody's thoughts all at once unless our character is a telepath. We can keep our focus on a singular person, which can make writing easier for people that have just started out. Okie dokie. I do want to talk also, as I said earlier, about some of the problems of writing first person. Point one, with first person perspective, a reliable narrator will never exist. First person perspective will never allow us to truly be able to trust what we're being told. Because everyone has a bias. Moving back to Anthony Burgess and A Clockwork Orange, Alex is a despicable character, but we look at how he says things and it is obvious he wants us to sympathize with him. He wants us to feel bad for him, which I think reading the book versus seeing the film is why we do, or some people might read this and be like, oh no, poor Alex. But you watch the movie and you're like, oh, <laughs> you got what you deserved and it hurt and I'm glad. First person narration doesn't allow us to be able to 100% immerse ourselves in the belief that what we are being told directly by our narrator is always going to be 100% the truth and 100% the facts. For example, if I was writing a novel about myself, let's say, so if I was writing my own bi biography, I would probably choose to neglect to tell some people that I still sleep with the same blanket I have had since I was like five years old due to night terrors. I don't, I wouldn't want that out for the whole of the world. I know I just put it on YouTube. We're using it as a craft example, okay? So I might neglect to say that. And while technically it's not necessarily the same thing, I am opting to leave that out. So that therefore makes my narration of what has happened unreliable. Reliable narrators with first person narration will never exist. Point dos. We lack the ability with first person narration to get a good key in on our supporting characters. Sure, we can listen to what the, our narrator is telling us and what they say, but everything we know about them will be determined through the eyes of our narrator. Uh, so Rick Nancy uh, is the author of the Monstromologist series, which is fantastic. It's also written in first person. The narrator talks about the person that's watching over him, and it's obvious that this individual is a very eccentric individual, but he doesn't necessarily say anything bad about him. It's, uh, he doesn't look at it necessarily through rose-tinted glasses, but we read what he's saying and we're like, that's like borderline child abuse and maybe he shouldn't do that, but the way it's presented to us by the narrator, it's not stated in such words that he, the narrator necessarily saw anything wrong with the treatment, though we look at it and we're like, you should see something wrong with it. So we have a very rose-tinted look, or maybe dark look, at these other characters, which also ties into a non-reliable narrator. How much can we believe what we're seeing of these characters is actually true? And because of that, first-person narration does affect our ability to connect to and empathize with our secondary characters. 
point three, which really can also work as a point five to the first, is we are forced to side with our main character because that is the perspective we are seeing. Now, this is actually a twofold. So when we have situations like Anthony Burgess is a clockwork orange, everyone is literally terrible. And the characters that don't start terrible, like the man whose wife gets uh, raped and beaten to death, essentially, while uh, Alex and his droves are singing, singing in the rain, he turns terrible. He becomes a terrible person and attempts to exact his revenge on Alex. So we are put in a situation where none of our characters in this novel are actually likable. They're all awful, and we should hate all of them. But for some reason, we do kind of like Alex a little bit. Again, that's our unreliable narrator trying to make us sympathize with him. We can agree that maybe the way they tried to fix him is not necessarily the way people should be treated or fixed. So we are almost forced to sympathize with him in that respect. We are forced to want to side with our main character. We're not able to step back and look at this objectively because everything we're hearing is from this person. And kind of in that regard, unlike books like The Monstermologist, where we do definitely sympathize with our main character, we like him, he's a good person, whether it is the younger character whose journals are being read by the person that actually opens the novel because it's not the same and I can't remember their names at this time or the or what have you sorry lost my train of thought for a sec we are forced to want to like and want to sympathize with the main character this is also a problem in that we don't always want to sympathize with the main character which is also an interesting thing to work with with first person like I said um we definitely get that in a clockwork orange we don't want to sympathize with Alex he's a terrible awful person and if you get to the end of that book and you idolize him as a character then you've missed the entire point of the, the novel uh, as opposed to like I said the monster monologists where we do want to sympathize with them or maybe even Twilight I don't like Twilight but even I can admit to that we want to sympathize with her even just a little bit however as I said that this could also work as a point five as to why first person is a good thing it puts us in a unique place where we really have to dig around and figure out what is being told to us that is a lie and what is being told to us that could actually be construed as truth from a, from a narrator that we can't necessarily trust at face value. While we are forced to a degree to want to like our main character, I always find it interesting that we, are, that we can be placed in situations where we don't like the main character, where we are dealing with a character that we are actually designed not we're actually designed, but has been designed for us to look at and go, you're fucked. This is not okay. What is the matter with you? It's like, it would be like reading Batman, but instead of looking at everything through Bruce Wayne's perspective, it is all through the Joker's perspective. And I want to say that there's some times where that's actually, I want to say there's a comic that almost does that. Anyway, so we, we come to this, like, kind of fork with this idea of being forced to want to sympathize with our main characters. So I'm going to wrap this up here. I do definitely want to talk a little more about unreliable narration later on because it's a, it can be across the board with perspective. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys enjoy the art behind this video. If you guys enjoyed the sound of my voice or just want to be able to punch me in the face in later videos, you won't actually be punching me in the face, but you can punch me in the face in the comments if you so desire. Do hit that like button, hit that little subscribe button if you guys want to see more, hear more. I hope you guys have a lovely day, my loveliest of dudes, dudettes, both, neither, so on and so forth. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Toodles!